appreciate it. Uh, you know, I, I was telling him take out all the important, all the stuff that sounded important. Uh, because I think a lot of times, especially when I was in school, uh, the best experiences I had were in moments like this, where you can kind of meet something, uh, an idea, um, have it, hold it, kind of take it with you. Um, so my goal in this time with you um, as we kind of discuss design, the power of it, what it can do, what community's involvement is, is to really allow you an opportunity to just hold one thing when you leave, right? So I'm not trying to get you to memorize everything. There's a ton of slides here. What I'm actually asking you to do is like, just try to take one thing. Don't waste your time, right? Uh, my name is Jason. I'm the president COO of Destination Crenshaw. Uh, Destination Crenshaw is a nonprofit organization in LA. Uh, we are working on Crenshaw, doing a lot. We will talk about that. But really, what we're going to talk about today, and it just so happens it's February 1st, is the fact that our project is based in community. Um, Crenshaw is black, um, and we intend to keep it black but we don't intend to sacrifice our aesthetics. So what does that mean? We have to actually deal with the fallacy that exists in our communities. Right? In systemically oppressed, disinvested communities, what happens when you improve? We gotta go. Nobody wanted to say it, right? So right now, our challenge as an organization as a project, as a people, collectively, is to push against that notion. You cannot block that. You cannot unfollow it. You cannot not talk to it. How do you actually try to get more education, a better job, and then compete against a notion that you soon, too, could be the reason why somebody else has to move? Have you thought about that? Have you thought about every single advance that you make? You could move from the neighborhood you don't want to be in to the neighborhood you do want to be in, but guess what? What had to happen? Somebody else had to leave in order for you to do that. Unless you design your future, which is what we're talking about. How do you collectively, community, design your future. So why am I saying this? I'm saying this because it doesn't just start today. You have to have historical context with the designs that you're making. Every decision that you make, every community that you work in, every project that you wanted to do is not the first time somebody's thought of it. It's not the first idea that's ever established. There is historical context that exists. Stop being too young to think about it. Every idea is not the first one, right? You can actually push forward, you can do things, and you can actually think about the timeline that exists. I'm gonna move this, because it's too, I can't do it. Okay, so if you think about where we are today, this is where we are, right? But when I think about our work, when I think about the decisions that we're making, we have to think about Lamert Park today and know that They've been saying all black everything since the 50s. What does that mean? That means we have to actually talk to our elders the same way we talk to us. Because we didn't create it. They did. They've actually given us generations of that game, right? And ultimately, all we're trying to do is just move it forward. So what does that mean? We're not creating it. And that eases our tensions around what we can actually do, what we have to do. We're just trying to keep it alive. And then what are we actually doing, right? Are we actually trying to establish something or trying to bring it back? So in the 1940s, that little black bot there, that is the black population in LA County. In the 80s, you see the much larger, larger, um, that is the black population. In 2010, you can actually see it's here, right? And what that is, the spine of that color, 
right there is actually Crenshaw Boulevard. It's 25 miles, and 80% of the black people in LA County live along that stretch. So basically what I'm saying is, is that if this project that I'm working on doesn't work, there's going to be no more black people in LA. I'm also saying that if that happens, how many people didn't care about that? Everybody else. Everybody else. So what is Root Shock? Root Shock is a book that I have uh, my staff read as required reading. It's written by Dr. Minley Fully Love. And this whole book is about the root system that's within our community and how everything is really tied together. Um, at the local level of every community, black community, rare community, brown community, every community, there's a root system. Everything in the community works together in your ecosystem. So when you're thinking about your design, you have to factor in multiple factors around how this works. So when people come together, right, that root system actually establishes who they are and their value. And so what Destination Crenshaw is trying to do with our value is actually bring it outside of our body. I study finance. Some people call it intrinsic value. That's what's inside, right? the cultural elements that you have in your ethnic enclaves throughout LA. What we're trying to do is actually challenge that you can have spatial value instead. So what you see here is Sankofa Park. That's a 40,000 square foot amphitheater uh, that we'll talk about a little bit later and why it looks that way. But our mission is to create the most dynamic expression of black American culture in the country. 20 minutes away from you. So you can come and experience it, or not, but ultimately, for the people in Crenshaw. And so why is it happening? Like a lot of communities in LA, you will either now or soon have an infrastructure project coming your way. There's about $30 billion of infrastructure money that we need you as young designers to learn and know about. Because ultimately, this is actually why you're going to work. There's going to be a lot of new communities and a lot of new opportunities that's going to need design because all the infrastructure money that's moving forward. And really what happened with that project is that the entire community was decimated. Over a mile of Crenshaw was actually built with a train that's going at grade. So for eight years, there was construction along the street no front door access and no parking spaces for 40 businesses. I mean, the tracks are running through it, right? So I think it's both sides. Um, and, that's the, and that's the conversation is, right? There was no calculus. There was just moving through them. And so what the community did is really try to focus on community engagement. So the first thing that was talked about is that I was a community organizer. So my organizing work started a really long time ago when I was in Tennessee, kind of moved through when I was in Brooklyn. But ultimately, that's why I can actually talk to you like this today, because a lot of times when you're an organizer, you have one opportunity to kind of understand people, right, and kind of get your words out. Um, that's what this was. So it was a years long effort to actually get people to actually push past the anxiety and the anger that they were feeling and really look at like, Okay, what do you want? What do you want to do? What do you want this to be? And so the community really came together and they said, look, we want social infrastructure, community ownership, public safety, small business ecosystems. None of them knew topics. The opportunity was, is to find the balance in that anger and to actually look for the actual solution that you can push through that contradiction. And so what they did is they actually pushed forward a project that created a community advisory council. They went to Metro, they pushed hard against the train rail, and then ultimately got a grant to actually start the project. And so what you see here is them at the Metro hearing where there was a $14 million award for the Destination Crenshaw project to actually move the project forward and actually start capital construction. So quickly, you see the difference between anger 
and ultimately what anger can create. So yes, young people, if you're angry, continue, but also do something about it. I'm wildly angry every day. But that doesn't mean I can't have fun. I just know that it can be better. And that's what design is about. It is about actually utilizing that and then building what you can do with it. So what we did is actually contract Perkins and Will. And so Perkins and Will is a company that works throughout the country, but one of the things that they do have is a group called the Freeline Group out of North Carolina that is a group of black architects and designers in North Carolina that worked with the African American History Museum. They have a large history of working on cultural actual spaces, right? And thinking about how spatial justice and spatial design can actually look at community and how we can actually see community through it. And so Zena Howard and Gabrielle Bullock and her whole team came on board and actually worked with this. This is the North African Stargrass. Um, it's Bermuda grass in this country. Um, it is the bedding of slave ships. So this rhizome here um, is now seen in all 50 states in this country. So the way that Bermuda grass got here is people in Africa ripped it up out of the ground. They laid it on a ship. They laid black bodies on top of it. They sold they sailed through the, through the ocean, right? And then it came off of that and then replanted itself. Think about that. The thing that happens is that now on, you're never going to look at that as a weed. The story of the Bermuda grass is now ingrained in your mind. And so that's what we want you to think about Crenshaw. We don't want you to think about Crenshaw as this place you'll never go, or you never want to be caught in. We want you to think about the resilience of the people that made it through, and what we intend to do afterwards. And so the root system that we talk about, and what I just mentioned, in community development when I was working in Brooklyn, it's not big things. It's the little small things. So it's not that Starbucks is coming in, Right? It's the fact that you took the nail shop out. Right? In my little, my favorite place is actually M&M, so food off a of prairie, right? So M&M left, Starbucks came in. Jordan's hot dogs left on Crenshaw, M&M's went in there. So it's just patchwork, right? But ultimately you're disrupting that system that feeds the roots in our, in our community. And then when you think about design, you think about other elements. So the community actually started bringing things in when they heard the unifying narrative of the North African stargrass and said, wait, like, what about the Sankofa bird? Because ultimately the Sankofa bird means that you are actually remembering the past as you move in the future. The whole notion of the bird is being able to see backwards and fly forward. And every ethnicity in the world has some type of notion like that. <laughs> but just in Africa, it's this version, right? Everybody is trying to figure out, how do I remember this, but move forward? How do I not forget? Because what? It's not your idea. <laughs> None of this stuff is new, right? And forever, people have been saying this. And so what this turns into, and the designers use it as a way to actually move through the project, they say, why can't we create Sankofa Park in that notion? Why can't we establish a park where as you're walking up the ramp, you have an uninterrupted view from the south to the north? You can actually sit on top and see the Hollywood sign to the north, and you can see the treetops in the south. You can actually be over it with a drone and see the design of the Sankofa bird in the parklet. You can actually do what the Sankofa bird can do and actually make a perfect triangle around the park. All four of those stories are designed. You can actually have people experience things through your design that will teach them something, which is a good notion. 
And then we started working with MLA Studios. And MLA Studios is a landscape architecture firm um, out of LA. And we wanted to really look at like their palette. So once we started thinking about the North African star grass, uh, the landscape architect said, well, what if we expanded our landscape to actually be based in African art, right? And so they looked at this painting by Kerry James Marshall. Um, and Kerry James Marshall is an artist um, who basically, uh, his goal is to paint black art. So his people are very black, right? And the reason why he did that is because he said he wanted to make sure that blackness was captured in his art. But what people that don't notice about his, his paintings is that he actually bases them on palettes of African flags. So they're actually incredibly vibrant. It's just that people that want to see just the blackness do, which is literally our community. And so what he did was, is he actually based the palette of the, of the plants off of the paintings. So as you go through Destination Crenshaw, you actually see different flowers that actually bloom different colors. They actually bloom different times of the year, all intentionally designed to where different places along Crenshaw Boulevard will have different palettes. They'll literally have different flavors. There'll be a different painting. All designed, all intentional, all based on painting. And then in our paper designs, again, the North African star grass. What does that mean? It means that you can actually see the migration patterns of black people in the papers. And so our nonprofit privately purchased ivory stone from Africa to lay those migration patterns. And where are we laying them? Literally on the sidewalk on Crenshaw, the place that we all own. Novel. And here's, and here's the, an image of us actually passing a, a city test. And the reason why I have this on here is because you do have to play within the system that you have unless you plan on breaking it. So even though we privately purchased our own pavers, we still had to get it tested. We still actually want to do it. And it took a long time, uh, but we actually did it, right? And I think that that's something that... Um, you know, only people that actually plan on doing things really think about stuff like that. And then the shade structures, you know, you have the North African star grass, and this is for the design kids, right? You have to sketch. It looks all different ways. Like, I literally have a folder of thousands of different types. <laughs> right? Like, I don't even know what they would call them, but, because um, I'm not a designer, by the way. Um, but this is ultimately um, the final uh, exhibition, right? So this is the shades that we'll have. We'll have uh, premium shade covering for the people that, um, you know, can actually see the image of the North African Stargrass in it. And then we'll tell stories along the corridor because again, you have to design not only the experience for the community, but you have to experience for the people that are coming. So we'll have uh, what we call uh, thematic themes throughout the corridors. That's improvisations, first dreams, and togetherness. Um, they are actually working with narrative artists to actually show not only people that are from here that they're being acknowledged through our project, but people that are coming to our project that, um, yeah, this place existed already. Right. And then this is how it all comes together. So in the, in the top right, you see the North African star grass reminding you of that. But ultimately, you see it in the shade structures, uh, in the pavers. Uh, we'll have plaques and paint and stone pavers there. But we'll also have banner designs with narrative artists um, in our landscaping, right? So all these things tie in together. Why? Why? Because all of those reasons point to why this project is for the people that are already there. It is what we have in common, right? So when 
everything happens in blighted, systemic oppressed communities. The challenge is, is if you have something new come in, the people think it's for somebody else. Immediately. Oh my God, here they come, right? So the challenge I have as a person that is an advocate, started off organizing, door knocking 150 doors, is our, our 1,500 doors, is that listen, this is actually for you. How do you get people to convince themselves of that? That their intrinsic value is actually worth this on their sidewalk. How do you do it? You have to design a cultural experience. You have to actually design the way that they move within their space. Because ultimately, what you can do as a designer is you can actually think forward. You can predict. You can challenge yourself. And so, just want to walk a little bit through what else we can design. Just with that, you can actually change the way that people are economically impacted. So how do you create jobs in blind communities? You design the jobs to come. This is actually a rendering of a restaurant that just opened, reopened, sorry, it's Doolin's, Doolin's on Crenshaw. Um, we're super excited about that. Um, and just him alone had 50 people uh, come to work, all of them walking. All of them walking. That's crazy. Like, that's not his whole staff, but I mean, 50 people? You know, like, that's... Like, so just thinking about what the energy and opportunity is with design, it's that. And so with this, this is a Slay. So Slay is our foreman on our, on our project. Um, and he did 27 years, right? And now he's a foreman. And Slay is the nicest person in the world, but he doesn't play. And the reason why he's on our project is because we want that to be your first boss. Somebody that understands the community, but also understands what you're going through. And, you know, we can also design our workforce. So we have a 73% local hire, 82% local wages on our project, because we took the time and actually thought about the pipeline. You can actually design construction. So when we're thinking about social and environmental impacts, not only are we thinking about the art, the parking lots, the landscape. We're also thinking about how we can design a safer place, right? So we're thinking about how people actually share space, potentially rest, but ultimately how we maintain those spaces as well. You can actually design how people interact. And then you can actually design where people are. So in this picture, you have everybody from the U.S. Department of Transportation to the mayor of L.A. to city council members to, oh, that's the owner of Doolin's right there, right? How do you design connection? You have to actually raise the money for it, right? So you're not going to be able to build any projects. You're not going to be able to design anything if it doesn't make money. But you can actually bring the people together through design and connection to actually do it. And then cultural and national impacts. Like how do we actually center people in the change that needs to be addressed? So what I do a lot of times is have conversations like this, not only in LA, not only in Long Beach, but throughout the country, right? Because there are so many communities, black, brown, red, green, yellow, that are all trying to stay and get better all interested in actually designing their future and participating in a co-lib movement. And so we're also kind of thinking about um, how public art can play, right? So in our community advisory council, we had a spinoff council, because that's what happens when you bring people together, a group of them actually say, no, I actually care about this more. <laughs> so their public art curatorial committee um, and they said, you know, public art is actually an important part about this. If we're going to create a black bastion, if we're going to create a black ethnic enclave, we need black permanent art. We do. 
Because ultimately, what does that mean? You can't take it away. If you're going to move me, that's still going to be there. You're going to have to deal with that. And we learn from Little Tokyo. We learn from historic Filipino town. We learn from Albera Street. We learn from all these places that wait. So that's still there? Why? Oh, because the city said. <laughs> the city actually acknowledged that as an ethnic enclave. Like, oh, that's what we need. Um, so we started really looking at who are the artists and the griots in our community that can help us do this. So one is Charles Dixon. Uh, Charles's piece is called Car Culture. Um, it is actually an engineering feat, literally designed. Um, so this is African Sanufu figures uh, made out of steel. Um, it is 12 cars rotating on top, um, all being painted by Crenshaw uh, body shops. Um, and Charles is literally one of the smartest people ever. He used to cast and make car parts from scratch. That's crazy. But he's an artist. Design. Um, this is Immersion Man by Artist Lane. Artist is 96. Um, she is a, a wonderful human being. And, you know, that is an eight foot high statue breaking out of concrete. The thing that you can also design is interaction because the model that she uses at 96 is the main actor of Amistad. So he has to come to her house. And she said it's the way that she gets to talk to him. So you can actually design that too, right? That's supposed to make you laugh. So Marin Hassinger, an object of curiosity and radiating love. Um, this is an, an orb. Um, she works in this radiant pink color. Uh, the reason why she works in this color is because she wants to balance the rage that she has as a black woman. So you can actually design the reaction that people are going to have when they see that. It's going to be classic. Right? They're going to have so much fun and then they're going to click it and be like, oh shit. Right? That's what we want. We want that duality. And so you see them actually playing together. Um, and then we have Kehinde Wiley. Um, he's best known for this uh, presidential Obama painting. Um, but he's going to be doing uh, his latest in the Rumors of War series. Uh, it's a 20-foot plinth um, sculpture. It'll be a black woman on horseback. Um, really celebrating you know, who we are, but ultimately it'll be one of its kind uh, in, in L.A. and on the West Coast. Um, there's a lot of schools along the corridor, so just thinking about the, the intention of having young people actually experience this in daily life um, is exciting. Right. Um, and then you have Gerard Stripling, um, artist, designer, sculptor, um, doing the Crenshaw gateway sign. So this is one of the last things that people will see as they go south on the train and go underground. Um, they'll see this weathered steel kind of manufactured um, uh, sculpture. Um, and so, you know, how you think about uh, your community is, is, you know, I think it's, it's intrinsic to think about the existing value. So what you have here is the RTN crew, uh, Rock the Nation. Um, they last painted the Crenshaw Wall um, in the early 2000s, but it's been painted since the 60s, right? So different crews have gone out painted it, repainted it, repainted it. Um, and so we're actually recommissioning them to actually come and do its latest interaction. Um, and the idea is that we work with them to create a place that actually serves us, right? So we make it accessible. The design part is the new stair entry there. Um, we actually build the, the, the monumental kind of acknowledgement for people outside of the community because everybody else already knows it's the wall, right? And so that's where we can kind of work with design and artists to actually co-create and build something that, that works for everybody. And you see the top end where we kind of come off, there's compliance there, because right now the, the footing is maybe four inches where you come off of the wall the wrong way and then there's no light. It's hyper dangerous, actually. 
<laughs> but um, for a lot of different reasons. But this will actually give you an uninterrupted view where you can safely kind of see where you're going um, instead of having like a bottleneck. And so in the 50th Street Park, uh, this is Allison Saar, another artist. Um, if folks ever go to uh, LA and Hollywood Park, um, where SoFi is, uh, the new movie theater, she has two sculptures outside in the kind of walk entryway, right? And they look like this. Um, and so her bearing witness uh, kind of series is all about people that she's witnessed, right? So you can actually design, um, you know, memories. She wanted people to experience Crenshaw in the 50s, where you actually used to wear a suit and a cane and like wear your Sunday's best all the time. Because that's what she, that's the Crenshaw she remembered. Right? Um, that doesn't mean it can't exist, that just means she designed that memory. And so John Outerbridge, um, his piece here um, is based in uh, an exhibition that he did in Tijuana. Um, it's called The Story Continues. Again, bringing back that notion that nothing is new. It continues. It's coming. Um, but ultimately, we're embedding that art in the ground. We're going to have people actually literally be able to sit next to it um, and design the experience because what is the one thing that we know about our community is that we never have access to stuff like this. It's typically got barriers. It's typically in a building that we don't know what goes on inside. So why not just put it in the ground and let people deal with it? Let's see what it does. You can design how people interact with art. And then at 54, if this is Mel Edwards, Mel always works in kind of chain objects. Um, the reason why is because he wants people to actually change the way they think about chain. Like, if you thought about the resilience that people had as they came, would you think about the pain that they had when they were there? So we can actually design new thoughts about the past. What he says is you can never actually look at this with your head down. That's, that's the mic dropping and it didn't drop. Um, and then you have I Am Park, this is Brenna Youngblood. Brenna Youngblood is a UCLA grad. Um, she's kind of working in a playful notion, uh, designing how kids interact with art. So this is all about how people can actually be in work and space and not even know they're around art. So it's a climbable, totally buildable structure. Um, but when you step back from it, it's based on I am which is the posters from the Civil Rights Movement. Right? So you can actually design learning and play. And then we have artists that are actually being commissioned to build these mounds as well. Because what we do want to show is that there's a different way in which you can actually do parks. You can actually have artists participate in every part of it um, and design those mounds as well, which are going to be playable structures. And then we're going to design the way that we revitalize the businesses. So Patrick Henry Johnson, uh, who's best known for the elixir on Crenshaw, um, he's designed and commissioned uh, what he sees as the Par R. Williams kind of experience. So Par R. Williams is one of the premier black architects, um, has stuff all over LA. Uh, the Getty just purchased his house and like are making it a museum. Um, this is actually going to be uh, a mural on the side of an auto zone. Why? Because we actually still use that. <laughs> we don't want the auto zone gone. People still need that. We can't afford, that's what we can afford, right? But that doesn't mean we can't put high quality art and we can't pay an artist to actually upgrade that property. And the conversations that we're having with AutoZone Corporate in Memphis is about why. Like, why this store? Like, it doesn't even make us money. It's because it actually hires people from the community. That's why. You can design the way people see about themselves. 
Ramses. Ramses works in tile, and we actually uh, are working to actually have the panels show the first. Again, with the thematic nodes, designing the way that people learn about the first in their community. So it's the first actors, the first politicians, the first civil rights folks, the first entertainers. And if you notice what building it's on, that's F and J liquor. Why? Why would you do that on a liquor store? It's because Miss King, who owns that property, is a widow and a mother of one. And she actually doesn't want the liquor store there. But they're the only people that would rent. So if it's blighted, who rents? The people that can. So if we can bring her more excitement, if we can design the way people see about her property, maybe she gets other tenants that want to come and then she can actually move on from what she doesn't want. Are we blaming the right people? You can design a new conversation. And so Toons, who's working right now, his scripture is about Hey Young World, which is cool. But I think what's cooler is that he's actually working on the other side, which I'll show you. And he's doing stencils for the business owner. So he's doing his mural, but he said, hey, wait, I know that lady. I'll, I'll, I'll do the signage too. Cool. Let's do it. And so he just is doing like a world-class thing on the other side too. So we can actually design how people see about their own business and, and their connection. And the last thing I'll talk about um, before I get to question and answer is um, I'm saying all this to say you have to ground your work in care. The reason why I'm pointing back to things over and over and over again is because you will get to a point where it's going to be if you care or not. It is. I've done a lot but nobody's ever questioned if I care. And the reason why is because every decision that I make is based on the ethics of care. The staff at Destination Crenshaw we use the ethics of care as a way to see and know that we care. Because ultimately, what's going to happen? Somebody's going to be like, you don't care about us. You're just doing this project. I've got to know for sure that I do. In black feminist philosophy, this is how you know. Are you intensive? Are you responsible? Are you competent? Are you responsive? Are you showing plurality? Meaning, are you answering multiple things with one thing? And then, we gotta finish. So you can show that you care, but ultimately, you gotta complete something. So today, Complete one thing. A lot of times with my team, they get really frustrated with me because I'll stop them at like 3.15 and say, wait, just do one thing. Just finish something, right? Because if you do that, guess what? You go into tomorrow feeling a little better. So if you can just commit to not leaving open-ended things, just one, tomorrow you'll have less to do. It's less stressful. And for us, that means we got four pocket parks, 85 commissions to go. I gotta hire 25 people. I gotta find eight more board members. I gotta start a business improvement district and I gotta raise 35 mil. It's exciting. But at least I know I'm gonna finish it. Right? That's how you know you care. So ultimately what I'm trying to do is repair Crenshaw, repair Los Angeles, and then fuel a movement. And I'll send you the slides about the other stuff. But fueling the movement is the most important to me. And it's really how you guys can look at design as a way to care for people. So to show your attentiveness, you have to acknowledge people's history in your design. What is the context? 
the first thing that we started off with is understanding that, yes, you're new and cool, but it's probably already happened before. And if it has, then you can build on top of it. That's an opportunity to not start over. Responsible. Just be available for feedback. I actively try to get over myself. That's why I was like, eh, probably should have wore the hoodie. Because ultimately, like, I don't want you to think that there's that much distance between you and me. There isn't. There's no difference. It's just a lot of caring about it. That's it. Competency. Allow somebody to co-design with you. That's the reason why you're in college. The people you're sitting next to, don't just like hawk your stuff, like work together. Actually be like, can you make this better? Let the person next to you try. Debate about if it is better or not. <laughs> that is actually co-creation. I promise you it will be better. I promise you. The whole thing about what you see is literally what other people don't. It's an opportunity. Responsiveness. Change stuff in real time. As soon as you feel it. As soon as you feel it, change it. Don't wait. Don't convince yourself that you were right. Don't convince yourself, no, it's, it's okay. No, it's, it's bad. As soon as you thought that. Okay? And then plurality. Try to get as many solutions as possible out of one thing. Just try to squeeze it out in every design that you have. Convince other people that they're seeing stuff that they're not even seeing in it. Because it's that way of salesmanship that's going to actually mean that you care. That's the plurality. All the different ways in which I am trying to show Crenshaw that I care is because I have to convince them that I do. There are no assumptions. And so when you go into your work, when you go into community, and you're doing your designs, don't assume they care. And that's hard. But you can show them you do. And that's the opportunity. Thank you.